All right, guys, uh, I'm going to do a little Alchemy 1 editing trick here, and I'm going to address something I completely neglected to talk about uh, in the video. Uh, Strider controversy about Stolen Valor and about Mick Strider being a felon. Uh, I am well aware of that. Um, I have opinions on it that are not going to be shared in this video. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to work this in to the video. It might be at the end. It might be at the beginning. Uh, but this video is not about that. Uh, if you are interested in hearing about my opinions on Mick Strider and what exactly happened and what is going on, uh, you know, even the Medford controversy that recently popped up, I would be more than happy to talk about it. Uh, if you want to discuss you know, Mick Strider in the comments, that's fine. Uh, however, I'm not going to get involved with it. I know that it is a hot button issue and I know people are passionate about it. And yes, he fucked up. Uh, and that's the honest to God truth. It was a mistake. Um, but I think I don't know. I'm going to save my opinions for the video I do on it. Uh, I'm not sure what the time frame is going to be on that video. Um, but yeah, just be aware that there is controversy surrounding Mick Strider and his knives. Uh, most people know about it already, at least people that are watching this video. If you don't, uh, you can do some quick Google searches uh, and find out a pretty decent amount of information on it. Um, but yeah, that's not really going to be addressed in this video. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. So continue on. Hey guys, what is going on? Sharp thinking here. So I wanted to make a video on, uh, this knife. This is a Strider PT. Um, most of you guys should be familiar with Strider knives. I've done several videos on, where is it? This guy right here. Uh, this is a Strider SNG. So based off of the same, like, lines, I guess you could say. Uh, but the PT is a great deal smaller. Uh, and then there is obviously a larger that most people are aware of, which is larger than the SNG. And that is the SMF. So, um, this is kind of an interesting knife. Uh, I have to say for it being the size that it is, which... Uh, this is probably a little bit smaller than a pair of three. Um, I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, to me, I guess we'll wait to get into quality and whatnot, but, um, it just feels a little bit better built than my SNG. Um, just all around, you know, upon looking at the knife and really, uh, examining it closely, it, it just seems very well built, uh, which this knife is pretty well built. Uh, it's not that there's anything wrong with the way this is built. It's just this to me feels like it's a little bit of a step up. So before I get into any of that, uh, let's do a size comparison. Put that guy in the middle. Uh, here it is against a Hinderer XM18, a North Arm Skaha 2. We'll do some Chris Reeves. We'll do the Sabenza 21 carbon fiber. The Chris Reeve Omnumzon. Get some Microtex in here. Oh, I just dropped my Chris Reeve on the floor. That is no good. Let me get that real quick. I always drop this one. I don't know what my deal is. Uh, but here it is against the uh, LUDT and the uh, SOCOM Elite from Microtech. And uh, why not? It's on the table. Here it is against the SOCOM Alpha and the Microtech Stitch. And then I'm going to go grab one other knife. Here it is against a Hinderer XM Slippy. So the XM Slippy... For those of you that don't know, um, is basically a flipperless, non-locking Hinderer XM18 3-inch. Uh, it's identical in terms of like handle size, 
um, and pretty much the same uh, in terms of feeling in hand. Uh, the XM18 has a lock, so it's a little bit different. But um, yeah, good size comparison right here. Uh, so getting into it, uh, this knife, I feel like it does a lot of things better than the SNG, at least for me. And I can't believe I'm saying that because the SNG is almost the perfect size knife for me. In fact, I would say that it is right about the perfect size. Um, it's like a 3.5 inch blade. Let me get it out. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the sweet spot for most knives, you know? Um, and this knife, I think it's just barely, it might be under three inches. So it's shocking to me right off the bat that I like this knife, dare I say more than the SNG? <laughs> I don't know if I feel comfortable saying that, but, um, I like it more than I thought I would. And that I am 100% sure of. Um, so I guess we'll start with the handle as I often do. Um, the handle, unlike most striders is full titanium. Uh, I know that the AR 7.5 or the not 7.5 point 75, uh, was a full titanium handle. Uh, usually for this line of knives, you know, with the SNG and SMF, you're going to see either aluminum on the show scat show scale or uh, you'll see G10 on the older models. This one's full titanium. I like that. I know some people do not like titanium uh, or they think it's overrated or whatnot. Uh, I'm a big Chris Reeve fan uh, and just from handling their knives, I've just grown to like uh, full titanium handles. Um, yeah, so very, very well finished. It's got kind of an orange peel uh, finish to it, which is identical to what my SNG has right here. So these are very similar in terms of finishing. This one is anodized. They did make a plain uh, version. Uh, I believe that one is also um, orange peeled. Uh, so yeah, definitely a big fan of the orange peel. It seems to hold up to pocket wear very well. I carried this one a good portion of last summer um, and I mean, you can see it is pretty minimal in terms of the wear. It may have lightened up a little bit uh, in certain spots. I think it was more purple and blue uh, when I got it, but still not bad. I uh, really, really like the orange peel. Uh, in terms of hardware, it has very nice hardware. Uh, one thing that I do not like at all about the SNG, which is not a problem for everybody, is this pivot. Uh, it's a spanner bit. I think it's a, I'm not even going to tell you guys the size because I don't remember. But um, I ended up dinging up my handle. Uh, not too bad, but still, I messed it up a little bit. Uh, this just has a, what is it, a T8, T9, or T10? Uh, fucking, not Allen. Uh, torque screw. Man, I'm struggling here. Um... So yeah, that is a tremendous step up, in my opinion. Uh, it's still got the solid pivot, uh, which I know a lot of guys like. Um, not sure what it really offers to the end user, but I think it's cool. I like it with the hinderer, um, and it's no, no different on this knife. Um, but yeah, hardware, very nice. It seems to be very high quality. Uh, I use Weeha bits, um, and yeah. They fit in there perfectly. There's no play, uh, or hardly any play, I should say. Uh, let's look at the lockup. Lockup is good on these. Uh, I prefer the lockup on this. I like a little bit later lockup uh, versus my SNG right here. So this one hardly locks up at all. Um, but this one has a pretty decent engagement uh, with the lock face. Uh, no stick, really, at all. So that's good. Uh, centering is, let's see, pretty good, not great. Um, however, that's not the end of the world for me. I know that drives some guys nuts. I don't really care. Uh, so let's talk about ergonomics here. A couple things I noticed um, upon handling the knife is that the pocket clip is put in a very, very nice spot. Uh, it looks like something that would cause 
some hotspot issues. Uh, just from looking at it, you can see that the clip is kind of uh, like hanging off the edge right there. Uh, in the choke back grip, which is, um, I don't know what came out of this knife. Hm, it's weird. But uh, in the choke back grip, you dodge all the hot spots on this clip entirely, uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, certainly a surprise to me. In the choked up grip, you really don't get any hot spots either. However, this choil, unlike the SNG, which has an abundance of uh, the forward finger choil, which you can see right here, it's got a lot. Uh, this has still a functional choil, however, it is a little small. Uh, not the end of the world, I think for a knife of this size, that's fine. Now, I've heard it said again and again and again. Um, you know, Chris Reeve knives aren't worth it because they have titanium and S35EN, and you know, they're not worth 400 bucks. I could get that elsewhere. Um, those of you guys that fall uh, behind that opinion aren't gonna like this knife, uh, specifically this version. It is titanium and S30V. Now, um, and I, sometimes things I say may come across as rude, but if we actually know what's going on, uh, or we know something about, you know, heat treats and whatnot, uh, this can be a very good thing. Uh, in fact, I, for years, preferred S30V to a lot of steels. I still prefer it to a lot of 20CVs and M390s. Uh, I can tell you my experience with, uh, let me grab it real quick. With this, uh, it's not a very hard M390. I can almost guarantee you that. Uh, it doesn't hold an edge well at all. Uh, I can guarantee that this is going to outcut uh, this M390 uh, or perform very, very uh, closely to it. So the way I view that argument is kind of, it's almost not even a real argument. Uh, but pricing on this, I think it's just under 400 bucks. Um, so not bad. I think these may have actually been 375. Um, but yeah, for what you're getting, I feel like that's kind of on par uh, with a lot of US manufacturers. I really, really enjoy this knife. Uh, I'm not just saying that. I mean, like I really, since getting this, I've carried it every day. Uh, but moving on, let's talk about the blade. So here is kind of a, a downfall, or I guess not a downfall of the knife, but it's something that is the cause of, you know, a few things. And uh, we'll talk about that. Um, the huge finger choil, that's one thing, you know, you can, you can have a finger choil and run the edge right up against the, uh, the, uh, what is that called? I'm losing my mind, guys. Um, God, why can't I remember that? Uh, yeah, but anyway, you don't have to make this big of a sharpening choil. I don't know what I was trying to say. Um, God, that really bothers me that I can't remember what this, uh, it's called grind lines. I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, but anyway, ignore all that. Uh, so the combination of this forward choil and the sharpening choil being the size of a dime uh, kind of takes a lot of edge from this knife and you end up with almost no cutting edge, uh, which is kind of, kind of nuts. Um, like I'm trying to see here, if we compare it to the SOCOM, which the SOCOM is a bigger knife, don't get me wrong. It's, <laughs> but we're looking at like, the SOCOM probably has a little over two times the cutting edge. And uh, I mean, compared to the SNG, the SNG is not great either. Uh, I mean, this knife really, really does not have a lot of cutting edge. It's a little bit less than an XM18. So that is kind of a, uh, I don't even know if I would call it like an issue with the design because it's designed that way. And the way they 
designed it to be, it is. So I consider that a success. But in my opinion, the sharpening choil did not have to be that big. Uh, other than that, it's not a big deal. So uh, talking about tip strength and whatnot, um, God, this knife is full of shit. Nigel carries his knives and drops them in the mud and does all that. Uh, tip strength, not great. Uh, it's going to be more of an easy kind of uh, like precision uh, cutter, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, talking about the blade grind. So it seems like I commonly uh, critique knives or criticize knives for not being ground thin enough. I think this is actually adequately ground. It feels a little bit thicker than this LUDT. Uh, this is the thinnest knife I own behind the edge. Uh, I do have another that's a little bit thicker. Um, but this is a very, very well ground cutting tool. And uh, that is such a huge issue for me because if a knife doesn't cut, then what is it? Like, it, it, it's not like a, if a knife doesn't cut, it's like a car that like doesn't drive almost. Um, if you think about it in that frame of reference. But uh, yeah, this doesn't have any problems with that. And I was super surprised. I shouldn't have been because the SNG is also ground very thin. Um, but yeah. Yo, what's up? Sorry about that. Uh, second video in a row I've left my ringer on and gotten a call. Uh, but anyway, I think I was talking about the thickness behind the edge. Uh, it's very good. I, I can't ask for it to be thinner because I know Strider has the whole hard use, uh, you know, whatever vibe going on. So I'm going to just call that fair um, and a positive. Uh, but moving on to blade shape, it's kind of a weird shape. Uh, it's not really like the SNG. It's, um, it's almost a little whale shaped a little bit. It like the belly starts, it almost has a little bit of recurve, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's a weird shape. I don't mind it. Um, the sharpening choil will snag on stuff. It's not the end of the world, uh, but it happens. It happens with most knives with sharpening choils, actually. It happens with my XM. Happens with the SNG. It happens with pretty much everything. Uh, but the nice thing is, is this is so gradual that I feel like uh, cardboard or material would slip up into the edge uh, if it were to happen. So can't be too mad at that. Uh, but yeah, overall, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised uh, with this knife, and I really do mean that. It, to me, feels like a tremendous step up uh, from the SNG. Uh, other people might have varying opinions on that. Uh, to me, it just feels a little bit more finished, more refined, um... If an SNG came out in this configuration, even with S30V, which I don't have a problem with to begin with, uh, I would go ahead and grab one and sell my SNG. Uh, I mean, I really, really, really uh, like this knife. Um, but yeah, I don't have too much else to say about it. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next video.